Welcome to a lesson on graphing the quadric surface, the elliptical paraboloid. As mentioned in the previous videos, the degree and the sign of the degree two terms, as well as which terms are present, help determine which of the six basic quadric surfaces is given. Then, to graph a quadric surface, it is often helpful to graph the xy, xz, and yz traces. These are the intersection of the surface with these three planes. So to determine the xy trace, we'll set z to zero. To determine the xz trace, we'll set y to zero. To determine the yz trace, we'll set x to zero. And if any of these traces don't exist or are a single point, it's often helpful to find a trace in a parallel plane. Let's take a look at the form of an equation that produces a elliptical paraboloid. Notice there are two degree two terms present and one degree one term. Also, if this equation was set equal to zero, the linear term would be negative. One trace will be an ellipse, and two traces will be parabolas. And the axis will be parallel to the degree one variable. Let's go and take a look at an example. First, we need to recognize that this does fit the form of an elliptical paraboloid, and now we'll go ahead and find the three traces for this given equation. So to find the xy trace, we'll set z equal to zero. That would produce the equation zero equals x squared over four plus y squared over two. This looks like it would be an ellipse, but if it's equal to zero, the only point that would satisfy this equation would be the origin when x is zero and y is zero. So the xy trace is actually just a point at the origin. Now while that's a little bit helpful, it'd be more helpful to determine a trace that would be parallel to the xy trace. So if we let z equal one, we could change this zero to a one, and now we could see that the trace of z equals one would be a ellipse where the major axis would be horizontal and the minor axis would be vertical. Let's go ahead and sketch this as our trace. So we'd have a squared equals four, so a is equal to two. So we'll plot a point two units to the right of the origin and two units to the left of the origin. Notice this is scaled by twos. Now here we have b squared equals two, so b would be the square root of two, which is about 1.4. So we'll plot a point somewhere in here above the origin and one below the origin. So this tells us that any trace where z is greater than zero would be an ellipse. Now to determine the xz trace, we'll set y equal to zero. That'll give us z equals x squared over four. And this will be a parabola. So let's go ahead and plot a few points to determine the graph. Zero, zero satisfies the equation. And when x is two, we'd have two squared divided by four, that would be one. So the point two, one is on the graph, and so is the point negative two, one. And now we can see we have a parabola, it opens up like this. And to determine the yz trace, we'll set x equal to zero. That'll give us the equation z equals y squared over two. Again, notice we have another parabola. Now when y is equal to two, we'll have two squared divided by two. So the point two, two is on this graph, as well as the origin and the point negative two, two. So we have another parabola, but it's not quite as wide. So the idea here is we could put these traces together on the x, y, z coordinate system to produce the elliptic paraboloid. But we're gonna go ahead and use graphing software to do this. If we were to graph this, it would look something like this, and you can see the yellow, red, and green traces. Even though this green trace looks like it would be at z equals five, rather than z equals one, as we found. Let's go and take a look at this graph on Maple so we can get a better look at these traces. Here's our elliptic paraboloid. If we take a look at just the x, y plane, looking straight down at it. And here you can see the elliptical traces. We can also see that the point zero, zero as the true x, y trace would be right here. 
Now if we look at just the XZ plane, it would look something like this. And again, you can see the parabola or the parabolic trace. If we take a look at the YZ trace, at this angle, notice we have another parabola, but now it is narrower than the XZ trace. So here is our elliptical paraboloid. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found this example helpful. Thank you for watching.